Hi guys and welcome back to another Tech Minds video. So for once I actually have a handheld radio here to show you that isn't going to fail every test we perform and that's because this is made by Radio Oddity. Well technically I believe it's a rebadged Anytone radio but either way it should be good. So this is the Radio Oddity GD168. Now it's a dual band 270 FM and DMR handheld radio which is specced to output 5 watts on each band. Now we can store up to 500,000 digital contacts and up to 10,000 talk groups so it can completely hold all of the current DMR IDs from around the world. The screen is kind of portrait style which is actually 1.7 inch color and with this orientation Radio Odyssey have been able to make the screen look super nice especially those font styles. It has USB Type-C charging and programming without the need for any special programming cable and it also boasts to have noise reduction for both transmit and receive. Now you do still get a standard Kenwood style speaker microphone socket so great for adding your own favourite speaker mic attachment. Now one of the cool features of this GD160A is that it has a satellite mode which makes it super easy to work through those low earth orbiting satellites using specific antennas. Now we will take a closer look at this later in the video and I'll show you how it works. Now interestingly though, you do actually get two antennas in the box. One is quite long, which would assume it's a high gain antenna, and then you get a shorter, more stealthy antenna, so the choice is yours. What's also pretty cool is you get two batteries, one slim line, and one which is a little thicker. Now, the reason for this is that the thinner one has a capacity of 1800 milliamp hour and the thicker one has a capacity of 2600 milliamp hour so it would actually last a bit longer. You do get a desktop charger which is powered via USB-C and you also get a wall adapter in the box. Now the batteries themselves do not have a USB-C socket on them but you can charge the battery while it's in the radio using the USB-C socket which is located just under that speaker mic socket. Now I've had this radio a little while now and I've been using it with my local repeaters and I really do like this radio. Its size is perfect, it fits neatly in the hand and it actually feels quite comfortable. You do get two programmable function buttons down the left side of the radio just below the PTT button. Now these are very handy if you want to quickly access frequently used features like zone selection or opening the squelch if you're using FM. Now as mentioned earlier, the screen is in a portrait style and with the black background, the text does really stand out and it's easily readable. Two VFOs are shown on the display which function at the same time, but you can actually turn this off in the menu settings where you can turn off the lower sub VFO, i.e. VFO B. Now one of the settings that I like to change is the backlight setting so that it's always on, but of course you can change this to your own preference. I also like to turn off the beep sounds, but there is a few options to choose from within the menu as well if you want to change them. A cool feature within the menu settings is the ability to record all incoming and outgoing transmissions. You simply go into the record setting and set to on. So from now on, any transmitted audio will be recorded and any received audio will also be recorded. This is uh, M0 DQW testing, M0 DQW testing. Testing, M0 DQW testing. You can then go back into the record menu and play back those recordings. This is uh, M0 DQW testing, M0 DQW testing. Now the software has a feature where you can actually list all of those audio recordings that are stored on the radio and you can activate playing them through the computer but they do play through the radio, they don't come through your computer speakers but you can export each of those recordings to the computer in an AMB format. Now the GD168 does not have an inbuilt GPS receiver or Bluetooth but it does have APRS which can beacon a location a text message and of course your call sign. Now while there are some APRS settings that you can do within the radio itself, there's a couple of things that you can't do and you have to use the software. So it's best to use the software to set up these predefined locations and text messages etc. Well let's take a quick look at that part of the software. Now the software is a free download from the Radio Oddity website. 
and you can just use the included USB-C cable plugged between your radio and the computer. Now, once the software is loaded and you have read the contents of the radio back to the software, just enter into the APRS menu. Now, you'll see five tabs located on the left side of this new window. Now, these are titled as Fix 1 through to Fix 5. Now, these are the settings for the beacon list, which is essentially five pre-programmed fixed locations that can be used with the APRS feature of the GD168 and also the satellite tracking feature. The GD168 does support both analog and digital APRS for sending positions, but at the moment I could not see any way to send an APRS message to a specified user. You can send regular SMS messages to other DMR users, but doesn't look like APRS messages is currently supported. Other analog APRS settings are available at the bottom and the essential one to set is your call sign. You can also change the APRS map icon character and your SSID along with any text message you want to send along with your APRS packet. Now I'd like to quickly thank today's video sponsor and that's JLC PCB. Now if you do not know who JLC PCB is, well, they're a one-stop shop for everything related to PCB manufacturing at a fraction of the cost compared to others. They're affordable and provide a fast and high quality service. JLC PCB can manufacture one to eight layer PCBs and with a fast lead time of up to just 24 hours, their strict quality control is trusted by over 5.4 million customers around the world. Now JLC PCB has an in-house production guaranteeing consistent quality for prototypes and large orders. The ordering process is super easy with instant quotes and a very user-friendly platform, which includes real-time tracking of your order. So if you want to DIY your PCBs, JLC PCB is the best choice. Even multi-layer PCBs are incredibly affordable. Six-layer PCBs start at only $35. Now you can also get a $30 coupon for six-layer PCBs on their website. That means you can experience high-quality multi-layer PCBs for just $5. So on the radio, you can set it so the APRS data packet is sent either at a specific timed interval on a specific frequency, regardless of what frequency or memory the radio is currently set to. You can also set it so the APRS packet is sent at the start or the end of any transmission. Now I tested the timed interval feature and here we can see the packet has been received by another node and then sent that to the APRS IS servers, which then shows on the APRS.fi website. Obviously, this is no good for anyone wanting to track their moving position, but I did hear some rumors about the availability to add GPS data to the radio at a later date. Okay, so let's take a look at the satellite feature, which enables us to use the GD168 to talk through low Earth orbiting satellites, which is essentially a floating FM repeater. Now, first we need to choose a location and we select one from the beacon list that we set in software. Once your location is set, select satellite and the GD168 will predict which satellites are going to pass overhead or above the horizon going forward in time. If you select the top one from the list, it will either be overhead already or there'll be a wait time until it's available. Now, if it is available, you will be able to transmit and listen back. Azimuth and elevation data is also shown on the screen. And when you transmit, you can see your transmit frequency will start changing. Now, this is to counteract the Doppler shift as the satellite passes overhead. Now, you will need a good antenna for this. A popular type of antenna is a handheld Yagi which of course you can make yourself or you could buy one ready made. And once I get one, I'll make a full video on how to operate with these LEO satellites. Now you may be wondering how the GD68 knows where these satellites are and how it calculates the satellite's position in real time with your own location. Well, within the software, there is a satellite data writing feature, which can be found off the tool menu. Obviously you need the radio connected to your computer and powered on for this to work you also need internet, but you simply press the HTTP download and write button. And what this will do is download the latest satellite position data and frequencies from the internet and then write this to the GD168. Now I would recommend to do this on a regular period as new satellites could appear and position predictions could change. 
so it's worth keeping it up to date if you're going to use this feature. Now, whether a handheld radio is any good or not, in my personal opinion, is how clean the transmitted signal is. Now, using a tiny SA Ultra, which, yeah, yeah, I know it's not a calibrated lab style device, but it does do the job. However, I'm proper thrilled to see that up on 145 megahertz, that second harmonic is around 60 dB down from the fundamental. And then up on 70 centimeters at 435 megahertz, the second harmonic is around 50 dB down from that fundamental. So the Radio Oddity GD168 gets a massive thumbs up from me regarding spectral purity. Mic Zero Delta Quebec Whiskey testing and Zero DQW test. Mic Zero Delta Quebec Whiskey testing and Zero DQW test. Now the GD168 does support Talker alias for DMR, which is where the preset call sign is sent as part of the data packet when you're transmitting. But for those that do not use this, you can load the DMR ID database into the radio using software. Now the users.csv file can be downloaded from the radio ID website free of charge. And then you just have to use the import feature within the programming software to load them into the radio. Now careful, this file is quite huge and it can also take a few minutes to download as there's just so many IDs now. Now this radio has a couple of neat features regarding the transmitted audio. You can adjust the mic gain level, you can enable voice enhancement, and you can also enable a noise reduction, not only on receive, but also on transmit. So here's what the transmitted audio quality sounds like. This is M0 DQW testing the GD168 with the standard microphone settings. M0 DQW testing. This is uh, M0 DQW testing the GD168 with the microphone enhanced setting turned on. This is M0 DQW testing with the mic enhanced setting turned on the GD168 M0 DQW over. This is M0 DQW testing the GD168 uh, mic enhanced is turned off and this is with the TX noise reduction turned on. This is with the TX noise reduction turned on. This is M0 DQW over. Now obviously this radio is loaded with features and I've not covered all of them. And DMR is not the most easiest to program or understand if you're new to digital modes. But the software is laid out quite nicely to make things easier than they used to be. Now I'm more than happy to make a beginner's guide to understanding how DMR works in terms of programming. But let me know in the comments so I can gauge interest. And there are already lots of other tutorials on YouTube that already cover this. So you may want to go and look at them and save me making a video. Now at the time of making this video, I believe this radio is only being sold in the US. However, I do think they plan to release it in Europe quite soon. If you want a discount off of one of these from the official Radio Oddity website, check the link in the video description. Until the next video, thanks very much for watching. Thanks to all my patrons and YouTube members. Take care of yourselves and I'll see you in the next one.